Hello modis, how are you? My name is Tamidis. Welcome back to my channel. We decided to come to San Diego for Labor Day and today we are going to the Safari Park, the San Diego Safari Park. We've been there before but we've never been there together so it's a new experience and I think they change a couple of things so we are very excited to see what they change. I love the safari park because most of the animals are loose and they can roam, they can go wherever they want to go. Right now we are walking around birds and that bird in Portuguese has a very funny name and we always say that the bird is saying I'm weak, I'm weak, but it is a guinea fowl in English, doesn't have a funny name. This bluebird is so pretty. There are little ducks. Very cute. A lot of flamingos. I love flamingos. They are so pretty. I love that how pink they are. <laughs> there are a bunch of food stores around the safari park and it's not super overpriced, so that's nice and they also have many gift stores. Oh, look at this little fella. So cute. Oh, look at the pelicans all the way there in the back. Oh, yeah. Cool. Oh, look at the gorillas. They are very cute. It's a family. Now we're gonna watch a presentation. It's called Journey into the Wild. It's really cool. out of the way. My name is Elias. I'm fortunate enough to be a wildlife care specialist here at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. And I'd like to formally welcome you all to Journey into the Wild. <laughs> Six foot waistband in that oh, amazing coloration. Now they earned that nickname, the crown crane, due to that uh, heap of feathers at the top of her head that resemble a crown. It actually helps her blend in with the tall grasses of the savanna. They will travel following ungulates, rhinos, grass, antelope, gazelle, etc., and they'll eat all of the bugs that bug on those animals. So, kind of like doing the show. You're also looking at an endangered species, everyone. But we are hoping to inspire you here today. We're gonna talk a little bit more about endangered species, but she stuck her landing, making her way on out. We're gonna be sticking, yeah. Oh, oh it's not oh. Starts at the top, it's gonna be make the way down to the forest floor. And he's making his way on out here slow as a tree. He's a cousin of the sloth, so it's gonna take a little time. This is Tatis, everybody. Tatis is a lesser anteater, but if you're from Amazonia, my people down south, we call them a tamandua. Now, the kind of people that say tamandua. One, two, three. Tamandua. Tamandua. Yeah, nice little Spanish accent. Oh, the Make their way on in from the waterways to the forest, foraging as they would out in the native range. So they would find mud flats and eat all sorts of crustaceans, carotenoids, crabs, krill, etc. Like a flamingo, that is how they obtain their vibrant coloration by eating literally almost primarily seafood. Yeah, all sorts of little tiny carotenoids. So they're getting to do some nice, nice uh, foraging on over here. Now they're just doing a little bit of this, zooming it about. Now, as you can see, they are, uh, there's two of them usually when you see them in their native range. You find them in some larger groups, sometimes in smaller groups, gregarious, 
found here are waterways, and what they're here to tell us is that when we're near waterways, we can run forests here on the guns, hopping on over trouble the southern. About our next step what is the first thing that you notice about Kruta here? Our meat, right? Our bill, yeah, massive. This is the Coco toucan, everyone. The largest species of toucan out in there, out of the planet, period. Uh, now that bill is massive, and can you believe it that it comes with air conditioning? It comes with everything that can eat. In fact, Coco toucans can actually flush blood in and out of their bill to warm up or cool down, one or the other. When she's nice enough to close, you can notice that she's got some nice little mascara eyeliner, right? That nice blue eyeliner. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Now, with that eyeliner, it kind of shows up they're very, very tight. So, having a very diet means that they're going to be eating all sorts of veggies and fruits. So, kids at home, if you eat your veggies and fruits, you can end up just as cool as me. Just let me know. I got you, friends. And she's got some amazing dexterity and well, Now, that's not just for fun. It's not just for showing off. That is actually a fruit top behavior that we perfected here at Venmo. Nice dexterity. Give her a round of applause. What is really interesting is that male and female toucans will, to solidify their bond together, a mating pair, they will actually dip the pieces of fruit and toss them to one another, catching them in air. This solidifies their relationship, and this is what we do to solidify our relationship with Fruta and Bembo. We're welcoming you to the club as well. Thank you, everybody. Now, these birds, unfortunately, are disappearing from their native range, so very, very quickly. In South America, they're found in wetlands, different kinds of uh, shrub forests, and they are some of the only birds to go after venomous snakes. Now, what is your biggest concern about going after a venomous snake? Getting bit. Yeah, so as Paolo makes his way on out here, He's going to do a bit of a demonstration of how he would safely and correctly dispatch a venomous reptile. If you can see, you're going to notice that he's a pretty tall bird, right? And he's got some nice little eyeliner. He's ready to go. And this is how Asteriyama do. Remember? Now, Mr. Paolo here, you know, he's only done this just a few times. He's been uh, one of our new ambassadors here at Benbo Amphitheater, and he has begun his dispatch. So he's going to make sure that that, uh, that reptile is nice and stunned. And as he is stunned, uh, it'll break up all sorts of bones in their body, allowing him to swallow the snake nice and so a lot of Monday. Now, Kawadi for short, I know it's early in the morning and the big words don't really talk. So Kawadi for short, this is why they are white-nosed Kawadi. They're, uh, this is a cousin of the raccoon. In fact, the white-nosed Kawadi, out of three different species of Kawadi, he's the one that looks the most like a raccoon, splitting that mask. Very similar to that of a raccoon. They're very dexterous. Uh, except, unlike a raccoon, he's in sports mode. If you take a raccoon and you stretch him, you get a quad, everybody. He's got that semi crazy style tail that gives him some amazing athleticism when he's climbing around. He's got those grubby little hands that allow him to manipulate his environment. He's doing some foraging with that gourd and getting in there, sticking his suit just in just about everything. And that body, that big old, can y'all see that big old suit? Feel free to duck too. Yeah. <laughs> She's got that beautiful bald head that is an adaptation of vultures. It allows her to stay clean when she eats all of her favorite food, which is the next stuff, carrion. Now carrion collects disease and they can digest disease, which is amazing. So you tell me, are vultures the bad guys? for taking disease away for free? They're not, right? So please, are absolutely incredible because of their secret superpower. On this next flight, everybody hold your breath. Ready? We're gonna hold your breath on this next one. Slowly but surely. Ready? One, two, three, hold your breath. Did we hear anything? The safari park is huge. There's many things for you to do. Right now, we are walking down to the little tram that goes around the savanna animals. It's super cool. Sometimes they have presentation here with the cheetah, like running, but today they are only training the dogs.
<laughs> That's not bad. It's just for you. It got so hot right now. We're going to the line for the tram. Cheetah. Can anyone find the cheetah? We need the tree. <laughs> okay, let's look all the way to the right-hand side of the habitat. There's a tree, but not with that stealth that he's got built in. The markings on animals are so individual and so unique. They're like human fingerprints. You have white flamingos. They have pink, but they keep it hidden. It's only visible when their wings are open. This flock of flamingo is called a flamboyant. You're right, you'll find a very special part of our park. This is our Nikita Khan Rhino Rescue Center. Here's the front yard of the Quebec Station. There is a lot more science to it than that. If you are interested, you can ask me upon our return. You can book one of the Rhino Rescue Center behind the scenes tours and meet the rhinos up close Raise your hand if you find any vultures. Anybody find any vultures? Anybody? Perfect. You find more than one kind, correct? You're right. Those cantaloupe are called pronghorn. And they almost disappeared under our noses. With 60 of them alive in 1997. They're from the North American continent. And the first ever of its kind, a collaboration between Mexico, Canada, and the U.S., began a species survival plan for them with over 600 born behind the scenes at the safari park alone. We're heading back into the South African. But if you're a beautiful Maasai giraffe like the tower to your driver's left, enjoying the shade that the pepper trees provide, you have three things you gain from tree can disappear into the habitat looking like a tree trunk. It's plenty of shade and plenty of food. The youngest giraffe that, as I was talking, stepped outside of the shack, working together. We're hoping that they will be around and behind them at the very same time. Female southern white rhinoceros. One born here in the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. Her name is Alice. She'd be the one on the left there. The view gets even better if you find a couple of grevy zebras heading up the service road to your left. You too can be an ally for wildlife, a citizen scientist, some kind of fun you can participate in. WildwatchGrowingOwl.org provides you the opportunity to monitor our newly hatched and released owlets. Where do we release them? We have to park her somewhere. This habitat is very fragmented with their nice white stripes. White stripes said to be and holy cattle are a semi-domesticated breed of cattle. Right a little later in the day. We're gonna eat right now. And here are some of the prices of the food. It's not super expensive. It's very reasonable. My husband got a pepperoni flatbread. And I got the tomato flatbread. And we got a churro sundae. My favorite animal is the lion. I love lions. They are so cute. Look at this tiger. He's so sleepy and hot. It got really, really hot. It is the next day. We're gonna have some lunch in Intonitas. We saw this place that have pizzas, but it's like square pizzas. So we're gonna get some. We got three pizzas. This one is like potato with truffle. That one is mortadella and that one is barbecue. Very different. They also have gelato and they have so many flavors. Everything looks so good. We came to one of our favorite beaches. This is Moonlight Beach in Encinitas. Kind of gloomy, but it's hot and there's a lot of people at the beach. Can you imagine having a house right there at the cliffs? Oh, it would be 
amazing. I come to the beach in California just to stay at the sand because the water, oh my god, it's so cold. Feels like an ice cube. We are having dinner at Pomegranate. It's a Russian, Georgian restaurant. I've been here before and it's really good. They have this bread with cheese, so good. And we got some stroganoff, some dumplings. My husband got a cabbage something and Greek salad. We're heading back to home today. We stopped a little bit over Six Flags to put gas in the car. There's like a tax stand here. So we're gonna get some tacos to take it to the road. We got home really late yesterday. I think it was like 11. There was a lot of traffic coming home. And I didn't record that much in San Diego because I was spending time with Susie. She's kind of like my American grandma. So I only record a couple of parts of like going out with my husband. But I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you've been to San Diego. If you're not subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe in the absolute world to me. And hit that bell button so you can get notification on my future uploads. A big kiss and I see y'all in my next video.